welcome to episode 47 of Let's Talk Geek. George Lucas ruined it for me. Internet show, how to smell like bacon, track your zebra, and sneaky New Zealanders. Thanks for listening. Welcome to episode 47 of Let's Talk Geek. I'm taking control of the show for a change because Tim's sick. Uh, he's with us. Uh, Tim and well, Jan. At least in body. In body, not in spirit. Oh my. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we, tonight we've got Tim and Jan and Johan on the mixes for a change. So if there's a problem, will you know who to blame? <laughs> Thanks. No pressure. <laughs> yes. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. He's in control. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So... Um, so I'm going to drop some IRC links. I'll do that right You're now. do that? Okay, so events. Well, it's a bit quiet still at the moment. Especially with the holiday coming up. Uh, There's there plenty of press events, but... Uh not really tech events. And yeah, stuff not, at the not really like a lot of tech events. Well. Uh, well, there's, there's the Hacksaw Coffee thing in oh, Johannesburg yes, yeah, this Saturday. This Saturday. Um, cool. What's that about? It's basically the guys that do ZACon. Okay. Um, yeah. They are trying to get a monthly coffee thing together where the guys can also get together, discuss security, security issues, security issues, issues and present stuff, basically get the whole community going. Yeah. Um, which is very cool. I, I would like to be there, but we're going to be presenting from the beer festival. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. My yeah. first question is going to be is, are they going to actually discuss security issues over coffee or is it going to be like <laughs> Big Bang Theory? And oh, probably like, a bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but this is now the third one, hey? Yes. Yeah, this is the third one. Okay. They've had it th for the last three months now. Mm. Cool. So, um, yeah, I'm sure. I don't know. They had, they've got, what, about 20 people showing up or something? A couple. Yeah. Look, I chatted to uh, the guy yesterday. Dominique. Dominique. Uh, Dominique White. And we're going to get him on the show after the holidays. And he's right. going to come chat about how's it going, what they're trying to do with it. And no, all no, the rest it's cool. It. And yesterday, uh, that was Tuesday, the, what, the 11th, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Was the 50th 12th, anniversary. 12th. So 12th, sorry. Yeah. It was the 50th anniversary of human space flight. Very cool. So if you'd seen Gagarin. the Gagarin. Yep. And if you'd seen the Google Doodle, they had the little like old Soviet era lo ro uh. lo logo and stuff like that, which was pretty cool. So mm. I must say, nowadays when I see those really cool Google do Doodles, I keep on wanting to interact with it now. Yes. And that the past one, couple, you can't. No, that one did. If you uh, moved your cursor over at the rocket launch. Rocket launch. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> All right. I wasn't very observant. So, um, so it did do something at least. Um, and yeah, so the school is playing Pac-Man, but so uh, no. check. I, I found a found an interesting uh, story about that on the IEEE spectrum. Mm -hmm. uh, Twenty myths about the first flight. Okay, like it's just fu it's just mm. funny things. You know, he didn't la like one thing. You know, he didn't land actually in the capsule. Oh no, 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 he jumped know. out and parachuted down. Or something. It was designed to do that. They were that that was the flight profile. It the. They were worried that the, there would be problems with the parachutes of the capsules and stuff like that. So he bailed out and parachuted down. So there oh, was, okay. but they kept that quiet because at the time the 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 official rules for the first orbit stated that you had to maintain control of the craft till touchdown. And ah. so the Russians have to actually kept it quiet for about, I think they said for quite a few years afterwards until, um, and then eventually the story came out and they said, you know, okay, this is what happened. And there's also a few other things where um, you know, the Russians kept quiet about certain things and that. So I'm sure from it's both cool. sides, both sides were going, oh, we did this really. <laughs> yeah, and there was some argument we, about, did he, really actually, landed on the moon? did he actually um, orbit um, the earth completely? Because he did not end up, he ended up, if you look on the map, he was behind, you know, where he took off was behind where he landed. Uh, sorry, it was in front where he landed. Yeah. And it's just because the earth was rotating. So it is 360 degrees, degrees, but the ground underneath him turned. Distance wise. Exactly. Yeah. Degrees, so yeah. there's a cool couple of little, little, uh, oh, some, very cool. some things that you might not know about. I'll paste it into the which RST is quite as well fun. for you now quickly. And, oh, and then last night as well uh, was the Tech Central pub quiz. Mm. So we were all there. Lots um, of fun. Really cool. We yeah. ended, we, we we came, ended fourth. Uh, we ended fourth. We but ended fourth. I still say I still say that the tech Team number table one, yeah. doesn't count. So we came third. <laughs> 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 I must say uh, the ZA Con table, which had uh, Dominic White, they did. Damn Dude, they well. kicked they did ass as well. well. So really well. And they, some of they those got the answers were unbelievable. No, there were some. They they but we did okay. We, we held our own. Well, so yeah. it wasn't well, too bad. Yeah. Well, Oh, Stu, how, how bad was it to be that oh, close sucked. to an iPad 2? Dude, it sucks. <laughs> I, was, I was second. If I, all I had to do was just move my, my guess two months further on, 
<laughs> and I would have won the damn iPad. <laughs> yeah. just, just to give us is the final round that led everybody, and we managed to actually get into the top three people for the final round. Yeah, and most um, of us got eliminated because the uh, we called the computer in, hell. Uh, yeah, in two thousand one, a space space odyssey. Yeah, exactly. Hell you need instead of hell nine thousand. Exactly. Had to have the nine thousand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, and then yeah, the, gritty. I'm going to kill we had you, to, Dave. <laughs> And then we had to guess, uh, well, we had to say when Tech Central started. and you got well, the right year. Just we got the right year. But yeah, that was impressive. A lot of folks went 2010, and I'm like, yes, yikes, that's no. a stab. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was 2009, 1st of September. It's also but when, yeah, everyone the, guessed. <laughs> a lot of these things, it takes a while to hit into the consciousness. Yeah. So it's when they first I'm sure we saw it. Yes, mm. yeah. Also a link posted for it. So anyway, that but was. I must say, kudos to the Tech Central. They, guys, it was well thank run. Thank you very much. Akanish awesome. Sasha was the uh, MC. 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 Yeah. And it was it was fun. It was very uh, cool. had us going there for a second, like caused some nerd rage when he said that the <laughs> uh, iPod when the iPod shuffle was bigger than the iPod Nano. Nano. Uh, and the and, and the why guns. all stormtroopers um, are left handed. Yes, no, wait, yeah. wait, just come back to the shuffle. Yeah. Um, and who ran up to stage to go with his <laughs> with his <laughs> flip, flip, flip phone to go yeah, like show <laughs> him what the fact is? <laughs> Jan was that you? <laughs> yeah. And and uh, after his wife also got in and looked it up. Okay, fair, and fair. he actually went into the Apple website. There's like a compare uh, a compare iPod option she's like she compared the iPod Nano to the iPod Touch put them all, all on one screen and went yeah now what <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway no it was lots of fun well run and it was a cool venue and everything cool. so if um, you guys have an opportunity for the next one definitely go for mm, it yeah. it's definitely worth it a couple of couple of things I'd like to say about the quiz um, which I, I'd like to hear your guys input um, we, we mentioned there that we think that the quiz would be fun even without the prizes <laughs> Yeah. If, that'll, if that'll help them put it on uh, more frequently. Yeah. My thing is, half the fun, you know, actually the prizes in a weird way detracted from the fun because everybody starts now competing for the prize instead of just having a duel and trying to beat the other teams. Mm. I think, yeah, I think maybe they should, like, there's always ways to flip it around and you make the other team buy drinks and there's, there's some fun ways if you want to have a bit more competition. But yeah, mm. the prizes... Yeah, it would have been fun without the prizes. It yeah. still would have been well, cool. And For me, the problem was there was just too many questions. The yes, quiz that's what was I actually, bring up now. Yeah. was actually too long. If they made the quiz shorter... And gave more time for socializing yes, because we exactly. all left immediately afterwards yeah. because it was yeah. late. Yeah. It was, it was yeah. really it was like 10 o'clock. o'clock yeah. Left, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, no, that, that would have been cool as well. Yeah. Yeah. So if they maybe had – you have a round of, of 10 questions and, you know, a good half an hour break or something, so a bit of networking and socializing. Yeah, yes. And cool. then you have maybe five rounds instead of 10 rounds. Yeah. 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 And, and even, and even uh, shorter than that, we actually said that, that instead of having so many categories, another option is to have slightly fewer categories and five questions per category instead of nine questions per category. You can do that. But like, and that will okay. also help them put it on more frequently because yeah. the preparation – I can the mind the like, yeah, I mean, I you got to find all those damn questions. Yeah, and they have to be fairly. I mean, they have to be difficult. Yeah, uh, yeah, you have to challenge the geeks. I mean, exactly. We know these things. Yeah. So, no, no, but it was good fun. It was really it was good. good fun. No, it was well organized. Very so well done. One thing maybe for next time is, um, you, it was definitely targeted at a more techno tech journalist type crowd. Um, maybe put a bit more programming questions and things like that might have been Or fun. just about programming languages. Just, yeah. Like, like I mean, oh, history of programming languages, for instance. Yeah, so I mean, maybe a bit of, you know, what's a dereference pointer. And <laughs> okay, whoa, whoa, okay, wait. <laughs> okay, Stuff just, like that. You know? just, so you mean back. instead of uh, skewing it towards tech journals, it should skew it to programmers? <laughs> no, no, but not, just, not necessarily. No, just, I say it would be cool to have a, 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 a nice couple of questions sure. yeah. mixed in. Um, Which even you know, HTML questions, more oh. geek knowledge. Because, but, I mean, flip it. I, I don't know who were the last five communications ministers, for instance. I can name you two, but I can't. So there was things like that. I can. Yeah, well, it was, cool. but it was good. It was, yeah, it was really was good cool. Fun. And, yeah, we've, yeah. So if cool. anyone's listening. Go for it. Yeah. But we're, we're available for consulting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we can help you plan your next show. And we'll come up with questions for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're going to move into the topics then. Yeah, let's go for it. Okay, um, so uh, first topic we got here is a, a cool little spark fun. Yeah, it's a cool little dongle for your Android phones that you can now use it to control some sort of external device. Um, uh, basically, over, your, plugs, over the USB cable. Uh, over USB cable, and you can write software for it. Yep, and um, you can go nuts. It's it's what they're using is the uh, debug protocol. 
over USB. So they've got a little microprocessor okay. that runs a, U, a USB host and it talks the debug protocol to your phone. So the, you've, you, just, you pop your phone into debug mode? Yeah, you have to have debug mode enabled on your phone and then you can, you've, they've got a nice API already written for you. you. Drop it in your app and you plug it in the device and it can control whatever you want. Uh, it's going to be quite, quite cool because cool. it's going to allow all those little devices you now see for all the Apple products. Oh, yeah. You're going to start seeing them for all the... Yep. Um, like the AR drone, that's one example. Uh, no, uh, no, no. This is, this is, you could still do that over like Bluetooth or your Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is if you want to have a physical cable connection in. Okay. Um, it's the only reason why you might want to do that is latency. And oh, there's a few or other car things. docks that you can car control docks that you can put in, Yeah, you can put a car dock in, so you can literally hook it up to the what's it, the BDO I port on your car, and have instru- your an instrument panel on your phone. Cool and yeah. stuff like that. Or, it's fun or, stuff. You know, some guys maybe want to do recording of the the, the mileage location. We've got Carl Sander who keeps on talking about all that. You know, recording all the yeah. systems and SARS who demands a logbook if you want to claim back for uh, talking about SARS. Allowance. There we go. So it's <laughs> quite I, cool. Yeah, I had a uh, sorry. Just no, no. <laughs> I, I got an email today going. Hi, by the way, um, SARS from from Nedbank. We Nedbank Financial. SARS has contacted us. You're doing fraudulent gambling from your credit card I'm going and you spent amount of like 6,000 rand I'm going what yeah <laughs> it says we, we, we need response what's your email address we'll send you the email we need response in 10 days hmm no no legit email address okay legit everything I looked at it yeah eventually I'm like thinking back but it's like November start going through my statements like what six grand, grand. where'd you drop six grand on gambling six <laughs> November, I had fraudulent activity on my account. Ah, yes. But what's worse is I immediately phoned them. So they've got the fact that my car got cancelled. The amount got reversed. They've got all that information. But they... They still contact me to go... So So I I probably just served them with a letter... Yeah, and they two just, different departments, and they just forwarded yeah, on. Yeah, well. So look, I kind of like certain ISPs replied. who forward on uh, piracy notices. Exactly. You know who you are. We will be getting down <laughs> to piracy. There's a story about piracy <laughs> down here. So, <laughs> well, on the whole thing, I I spent like ten dollars on Jip Jap. Yeah, what's thing, Jip Jap? Oh, it's a it's an online uh, flash based card flash. thing. You you put your face in, and then you. That was very play. cool. Very oh, nice, okay, nice, yeah. nice little. Fl- and I spent do- ten ten dollars on it. Up phones F and B for division me just to confirm the trans- transaction is legit. I'm going like, and that was through PayPal. I mean, I paid through PayPal, yeah, went yeah. against my credit card, and they phoned me up. <laughs> so they're doing something, yeah. I know Virgin does that for me as well. Uh, they, they've toned it down a little bit because I do a lot of overseas transactions. I buy a lot of games on Steam and stuff. Mm. And so uh, they kind of got used to the fact that I spend a lot of dollars. Mm. Um, but yeah, the first couple of times, definitely, they're like, no. a lot of them do. But they've got tracking systems now, which <laughs> the, the worst though is my poor friend in England. Um, every time she comes to South Africa, her car gets cancelled. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, as in no. to the point where she's she she pays extra so her card won't get cancelled. Phones and beforehand, it still gets cancelled when she arrives. I always when I'm going overseas, I always phone the bank up for my credit card beforehand and just say, "Listen, I'm going overseas from this date to this date." And they said, "Not a problem. They're going to mark the account." And I've never had an issue where I've, I've got there and all of a sudden my card doesn't work. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. No, I've never had it from this side going there. Yes, I think I it's a fact, apparently, we, we, we have a lot of fraud that occurs yeah. in this country. So if you're coming from England and suddenly they see you spending in South Africa, they go, ah, oh, fraud. We've had, <laughs> we've had guys from work go to the States and then can't pay for the hotel and stuff. It's hectic. Eh? Yeah. Because they want your card. When you get in there, they swipe and say, no, the card's been declined. Now what do you do? That's why I have two. You bug it. It's flipping late at night. You want to just check into your hotel. You've been flying for you know 18 hours. You just want to check into your hotel and go to sleep. And now there's trouble. <laughs> and no one can phone you because, you know, if your roaming's not on, then the yeah. bank's... Co- uh, but anyway. I, I, I've, got a, I've got a nitpick about that, uh, but maybe we should move on. But like about the, the, the whole pre-authorization thing in hotels. Yes. Mm-hmm. So now it's, let's say it's an extended stay at some Lani hotel. Um, like this happened during a st- an extended stay in the UK. Five grand off my credit card. Yeah. All of a sudden I can't pay for food. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's the same with the cars. You can't, like, prepay it. Yeah. And they can't do it. By the way, here's the work credit card. You've yeah. got to do it off yours. Yeah, and, then, of and then it's like, then, then I'm like, and I'm, I'm not going to stay the whole time in that hotel because it's so expensive. So I'm like, cool, thank you, goodbye. Please reverse the charges. It takes a week for the charges to get reversed on this end. <laughs> Thanks, Absa. <laughs> cool. You rock. Anyway. anyway, coming back to this whole, this changing back to the Spark Fund yeah. uh, dongle, you, the one nice thing about it, you don't need to root your phone. 
So if you don't want to reach oh, your wow. phone, you can still use it because there have been some patch uh, patches that you can use the headphone port as a serial port. Oh, yeah. that's very cool. Holy smokes. Uh, but you have to reach your phone uh, to, for that to yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. So, well, um, that's sort of using a port for totally different no, purposes. No, uh, you're just using the audio system. Uh, hey? No, it, there's two things. Some of them use just the audio and then they basically just, it's normal, um, what's it, like bell codes or something that they run over. So you've got two frequencies, okay. ones and zeros. Mm-hmm. And then um, some of them actually got a debug port that you oh, can okay. activate via a kernel Because patch. I know in the old days, the guys used to say you used to be able to turn um, some of the high grade uh, audio cards into modems. Yes, yeah. So if you this think about it, you've, you've basically got a DSP there. It's perfect. Yeah, no, this is basically the one way is doing exactly that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but to get it to work really well, you need to root your phone. But with this now, using the debug option, you don't need to root your yeah, phone. Yeah, so it's basically how you push programs through exactly. when you're doing uh, yeah. coding to your coding. phone. Debugging, yeah. Yeah. So it's a little bit pricey, but hey, the plans are out there. Go build it yourself if, you, if you're a tight ass. Cool. Um, but yeah, anyway. Okay, All moving right. along. <coughs> How's your guys' internet been recently? <laughs> Better than it is in Armenia. Yes. <laughs> Some, um, so we, somebody thinks, so we think that we've got it bad with Seacom and this, their SMW4 cable <laughs> there by Egypt. This lady was digging around in her garden for... Sc- no, no, no. Uh, she was digging out in the mountains for copper. Copper, is which, that which, okay? Which basically, I take to mean she was out seeing copper cable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you no, know, okay. you know, the way they phrase, phrase it, it I, yes. I'm assuming she's out seeing copper cable. Cop- Anyway, anyway she, she then dug through their fiber optic, main fiber optic cable. They have one fiber optic oh. for all the internet. <laughs> and it took it's out not the, just Armenia. It took, around, it took out the neighboring nations as well, I believe, if I remember. Oh, okay. I, 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 just, I, 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 it was the, I read the story. It was just Armenia yeah. that, that she took out. She might have taken out around the borders or something. Yeah. But, but yeah. surprising they've got no redundancy. <laughs> and and oh. following this also, that, make, that must have just gone and just buried the cable. Yeah, I mean, how, no you, you must have been digging pretty deep. No, no but... With your spade, if you look at our cables that they, they use for the thing, they're yeah. quite, uh, you know, they Yeah, they are, but I mean, they're also buried reasonably deep. Yes. I mean, if she's out in the mountains digging, I mean, you're going to put it a couple of meters underground. Mm. Mm. That's weird. So they did, either they did they it were, on the cheap. Either they did it on the cheap or she was really off to that copper. <laughs> and, and, and then I remember that there was some sort of statement from the guys saying, no, 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 you know, they, their cables are very secure and armored and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, old lady with a spade got through your cable, dude. Well, another one. You know how many times it's happened in this country where the guys put a back actor through the cables and take no, out. No, if, if, it, if it was an old lady with a back actor. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. Getting an old like a lady back, with a back actor. Back or something, sure, sure. <laughs> then, then, then I would go, but with a spade, <laughs> they did it on the oh, cheap. No, in, the, in, the, in this country, it's just because uh, our uh, road contractors are too lazy to go pull, <laughs> pull uh, street records. Yeah, I mean, that's another thing is, I mean, come on, can't these the road contractors just look at... Um, no, but there's a bit more more than that. At some point or another, Telcom stopped keeping records. Track, yeah. And also... Um, pe- and then they started again. So there's like a... I can neither confirm nor deny this. Yes. Neither confirm <laughs> nor deny <No>. this. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> keep going. Keep yeah, going. No, I can I'm also... I'm my head. <laughs> uh, from personal knowledge, neither can confirm nor deny. But they just... At some point, it's too expensive to keep records. You know what's quite interesting is also you've got okay, so you've got the wa- you've got water and you've got the water guys, the sewage guys, the electrics, and the telecom guys, or telecoms guys. Yes, and they'll all dig at different times in the same spot. So you'll get there's a water pipe burst. They rip up the road. They're going to now put in a new water water pipe. Which rips out the. They put in a new water pipe. No, it doesn't rip up anything. Like a week later, they dig up the road again, right? Because now they want to put a new cop a new fiber cable, or there's a a, a break. And you just check down the road in like a span of, you know, a couple of yes. meters. There's all these flipping patched <laughs> lines across the road because they've dug it up like three or four times in exactly the same place. You would but think that they'd, they'd get together and say, hey, guys, we're digging up here. Is there anything you'd like to put in the ditch, in the in the trench while we're busy? Uh, no, because but then the they go, why, why you're, you know, you, you're <laughs> getting a reward from our cost. It's not just that. I mean, I think if they could share it, they would. But I think the bureaucracy involved in going, hey, listen, did you want to work on cable? He's like, oh, yeah, but we had that scheduled for two weeks from now. Now we have to move it up. And it's, oh, yeah. But I'm just saying it's always funny to see. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, It's the same spot of road. It's been dug up like four or five times in the last two weeks. So you're talking about roads and cars? Yeah. Do you want to talk about the next topic, your, your speed hound gang, the really fast car? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, this has got even a South African twist to it as well. So, um, okay, so we've talked about it on the show before. It's the Bloodhound SS, uh, Bloodhound, uh, sorry, SSC Bloodhound. 
supersonic car, Bloodhound. They are trying, it's a, Richard Noble and the guys are okay, now yeah. trying to, they're the ones that did the previous speed record to break the sound barrier. Now they are trying to break the uh, thousand mile an hour sure. barrier. Very cool. They're going to be doing it down in the Western Cape. Yeah, on the salt uh, On flats. the salt fillets there. So anyway, they have... These things are rocket powered though, hey? Rocket and jet. It's got yeah. a turbine. It's got the, a jet engine from a Eurofighter Typhoon. And then it's got a rocket engine on it as well. One of the interesting things, I don't know if you guys watched the Top Gear, the first one of the current season, mm-hmm. where they, he, he races a beetle. Yes. Where they drop from the sky. And half his problem is his tires don't get enough traction on the salt. Yeah. So I suddenly realized, you know, there's no ways these ones that are beating the speed record are actually using no. the tires to push. No, no. The, the, tires that, the tires that got in there are bullets of aluminium that are machined, and they weigh about 90 kilograms each. And they solid alum, uh, solid aluminium, no trade, no nothing. nothing. On it. <laughs> but anyway, the cool thing is, um, there's no competition with this project really. So um, they're releasing the CAD drawings. You can go on their website and download the CAD drawings for the car. Very cool. Um, they've got some a lot of the engineering specifications for like the control systems are on there, where they've got write ups about how they work and how the architecture works. So that's awesome. It's Sorry, brilliant. It's very cool. It's uh, brilliant. Which means that uh, freaking can, amazing. If you're a good lecturer, you can get it for your students. If you're doing that's control systems. That's what they're saying. Yeah. Or for the mechanical guys. The, the thing is, this is the same drawings that they were using to do the, you know, the uh, CFD and the structural uh, stress analysis and all the rest of it. So your students can do it, use it. You can do it for fun. You can take it and build a model of the car if you wanted to. It's all there, and it's it's a freely downloadable. They've got a free viewer as well if you want to. If you don't have the the CAD software, okay, it's cool. a Siemens package that they're using. Right, I haven't okay. really heard of it before. It's open something or other, but it's all there, and you can get it. And it's a uh, and Stu, you're saying this actually worked out quite well because they had a problem, and they. No, the, the, another thing as well that they're doing is they're yeah. working with the community, so yeah. they've had some of the parts. They put out it as like a like a like a spec, and they say the community can must come with ideas and develop this product for us or mm. part for us. So they they're working with Element Fourteen. Um, it's a like an online. They they're part of Fornell distributors okay, right. and all the rest. Anyway, they have started to try get their community thing working. So they got a whole forum and all the rest. And we're talking about something about a speedometer that they're trying to build. Yes. So one of the things was is a high performance. Uh, well, a speedometer, but it's more they wanted non-contact. So it must be laser or some based thing that can, doesn't have to work on the wheels because that's unreliable and it can't work on the airflow because there's issues there. It has to be you know, either scanning the ground or something. Could they not maybe just have a mirror in the front and bounce off a laser? That's a solution, yes. But the cool thing was they went to the community and said, here's a project, guys. See what you can come up with. And yeah, they're doing it. And this is now a way to actually measure that they're getting up to a thousand miles an hour. Yeah, I don't know how. I don't know how. You know, mission critical. They're going to make the community product project, but it's still pretty cool that they're trying to get you know people involved involved in their in their uh, so like come contribute yeah. join us you yeah. know it, that's the thing it's it, that's the point and it's like trying to get you know students involved trying to get you know school kids get them into engineering get them into computer science very cool and no, it's brilliant I, I think it. it's flipping no, awesome it's very cool. so download it check, check, like the, check the drawings it's yeah. fun and especially people that are into cars and yeah. now to get them into mechanical engineering that'd yeah. be quite rare and yeah. I think it would be awesome if I mean I don't know they're doing a bit of community stuff in the in the ca- in, ca- in the Cape, mm-hmm. um, but it's more of like you know the community upliftment, not really actual engineering work or that. So, guys, come on, check it out and see what see what you can do because cool. it's and it's a lot of I want to go like and watch it by the way out. when they when they do do okay. the. I did email the them to hopefully try and get them to come chat to us, but they never got back to me. So. No, I think it's we'll, we'll try again. Yeah, we'll try when they are, I know they're going to be testing next year, end of this year, beginning of next year. They're going to be testing. It just so they're going to be out there roughly in, when in South S- Africa. SKA, um, yeah, wins the bid. Yes. South Africa. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Anyway, so we'll keep you posted on that because it might be a fun road trip. Yes. Cool. Oh, I'm cool. down for a road trip. Yeah, oh, man. To the middle of nowhere. Not to the literally, dude. <laughs> the middle of freaking nowhere. It is the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I think but Uppington is the closest town. It's like 200 k's away from. Oh, so it. that is that so is there by SKA territory. Yeah, yes, yes, it's yeah. in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I don't Apparently, think, great I don't think for looking at the stars. Uh, middle of nowhere, just a little bit to the left. Well, <laughs> but so if there was cell coverage and it's near SKA, there's not going to be cell coverage anymore. Yeah, yeah, that's actually something that came up at the Centec press con today. I don't want to get into the Centec press con, but uh, they mentioned the the SKA guys that are like, listen, you're going to have to lower your transmission power on your 
on your on your terrestrial uh, yes. television broadcasting. And also, if there are any towers within a certain radius, they need to be that's, removed. That's all that radio astronomy reserve, yeah. isn't it? Yes. It's all for, if anything falls into that as the reserve. Yeah, the certain oh, radius. It's, it's, it's a tricky situation, though, because um, a television is sort of the only way to keep some of those communities in touch with the rest of the world. So now what? No, but cable. We need cable in South Africa. Oh. It also depends. Um, satellite. Yeah, satellite, and also with a lot of these things, you know, government-sponsored satellite. It's it's got to be with if they've put That's their transmission fun. towers close to to SKAs. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's other ways. So they might just have to route it. Quite often, what they're doing is they're like bouncing from one tower to another to another tower. So now they just need to route around around. around. Yeah, cool. You know, there's yeah, ways. For we must the, we yeah, must yeah. get Cecilia on again and <laughs> speak to her about the the happenings down there. Cool. Oh, we must definitely ask her again. Yeah, definitely. No, no, I'll chat to. Her. All right. Right. Okay, moving along into to something more depressing. Not to bastards. Yes, yes. So. I, I really, ha- I, I'm a little bit disappointed in the New Zealanders. Really, yeah, me too. I mean, okay, well, the, New the Zealand way, the, government. Anyway. Well, yeah, the, well, the way they play cricket, it's maybe not okay. Anyway. <laughs> well, no, we're not actually, we're, we're not actually upset with the New Zealanders because no, the you, New Zealand government. They, you told to us that they, they actually voted it out three no, times. It's got nothing to do with New Zealanders. The people actually stopped it. So it's some government officials. So what happened was right. Yes. It's the uh, three strikes and you're out, um, you know, clamping down on, on distributing copyrighted content. So Piracy. What, piracy. So what it is, Yar. is if you get caught three times, they disconnect you. But it's not just you. They disconnect you and your entire family. Yeah, they disconnect the household. Yeah. Okay. So, it, you know, it, it could be your grandmother flipping what you was watching with the MP3s and now all of a sudden everyone's internet gets switched or off. Or we can be having a show, some guest rocks up. Does something we're not aware of. No, some, guy next, some guy running. next door is. Uh, uh, Let me just shut down my machine. Stealing, <laughs> a, you know, some guy next door is stealing your internet. Whatever. Or you, you say no. Here's the key for the wireless. You know, go nuts. Yeah. Anyway, what happened was so. Anyway, that's what they're trying to stop. The three, stri- you know, they're trying to stop. They've it's tried three times. They've tried. I believe it's three times, and the law. So has the been three strikes law is, has struck out three, three times. times. They've been. It's been kicked out of part. It's been the law has been stopped three times with massive outcries from the public. There was protests and all this sort of thing. What they've done now is they have passed a bill to help the victims in Christchurch of, to the earthquake, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay? It's an emergency bill, so it means there's, it's not, there's not so much oversight you don't and, need it, to goes get through, much votes and it goes through quickly. quickly. Okay? Well, it's also, it's, you know, these people are need. So exactly. So we need to get through, through it. And, and we them. need to get through We need to release the resources to help these and people. And if, if you're not voting for it, you know, you're bad. Look, you're not trying you to know help what these people. Do you know what these bosses have done? Is they've stapled this three strikes in your right bill to that rescue plan. It's dodgy. So, so what they've you. done is they've passed the rescue plan and now they've passed as well the three strikes in your art bill. Something I don't understand about, about uh, laws and stuff uh, is why is it necessary to pass a law to help people in Christchurch? Mm. That's something I don't get. Just flip no, no, it's, 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 it's the funds. It's like a, um, they, they need to release funds for like rebuilding yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and grants yeah, and things like you, that. You don't want to have government be able to arbitrarily decide to, uh, we're going to spend... 10 billion on that. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. then you get some guy going, oh, I've got a nice little project I want to do. And then they just push yeah, it Yeah, so through. it yeah. needs to go through that. And then they've stapled on this, they've stapled on this, uh, it's there, there it is, the, the crushed church earthquake recovery measures and all the rest. They've stapled on this three structure in your up bill onto it. Yeah, yeah. Whether it'll ever get, you know, through, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure if they've caught it in time or not. But uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to keep an eye on well, it. Well, if I was... The problem with a lot of this stuff, once it's passed... Oh, it's almost it's impossible removed. to get it's, it removed. It's, it's, it's so hard. It, it, you, know what the, you know what the irony is? They're trying to disconnect the service that saved a lot of people's lives. <laughs> True, yeah, I'm sorry. With Twitter, yeah. a lot of people tweeted. Tweeted, and, and that was the only... I mean, that's the only reason why they got rescued, is the guy's trapped under a building and his cell phone, he's now... He tweets. He can tweet his location. location yeah. and stuff like that. And... Now it's it's this yeah it's it's a little bit ironic but anyway we'll cool. see it, 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 the, once again it's a stupid law made by you know trying to get passed by people with an agenda well, the fact that they have absolutely to no clue how pass yeah. it that way it tells you that it's it's slightly it's corrupt yeah and the fact they have to sneak it in just exactly stop trying because, to sneak it around because they know it would never have got passed in any other way so now they're sneaking it through yeah, yeah. come on and and I don't know if, if people on, sort of you know go to bed feeling justified at something like this but as you say it's like and, and, and you see it you see it here you see it overseas you've got officials in government who actually don't understand how the internet is supposed to work no and and so uh, 
now what they now what you did, what you get is you've got these these uh, companies and, and lobbying and and yeah and associations that lobby. We don't really have a sort of lobbying thing in South Africa, yes, really. But oh well, yeah, sort of. It's, <laughs> it, but it's not the same as American lobbying. It's sort of like it, but not quite the it's same. More, it's you've more hidden. Yeah, you've got organizations sort of. Putting a lot of pressure on government it involves um, a lot more at a lot more black Mercedes, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> um, but the, the the bottom line is is that you know you've got these folks who a government official might actually trust. Yes, they might go. I trust you to have an informed opinion on this matter, yeah. and so you do what this person says because you trust that opinion, and and they tell you the wrong thing because they've got an agenda. Of some exactly. Sort. Yeah. And maybe even those folks, like um, I, I have, I have the opportunity as a technology journalist to sit down with the guys from, for instance, the Business Software Alliance, and they they have a very specific mandate. Yeah. Um, you know, to look after. Business software. Yes. Look mm. after the Microsofts and <laughs> yeah. that sort of thing. Not not that Microsoft is particularly noble, um, but my, uh, Microsoft South Africa. I, I wouldn't demonize them. You know, they they have legitimate interests in companies using illegal versions of Windows that they really but want to the stop. The problem with the, with a lot of these things, <laughs> a corporation's interest is in maximizing their profit. Yes, right. So immediately, the message they're going to give is the message that's optimized for generally maximizing profit for for their profit. Yes, yeah. not the what's good for the common the, the general public yeah it's got nothing to do with what's good for the economy what's good for the man yeah. on the street it's got good for our investors yes yeah and and this is and what i found shareholders. Is, is in my discussions with the bsa um the, the the one guy there he was actually quite frank about it um he said listen these are our interests which we would put forward this then needs to be debated Mm. by folks on the other side of the coin. Yeah. Um, so b before there to be sort of a, uh, a coherent yes. uh, IP policy yeah. to come out of it for South Africa. S generally the problem with that though is the guys that are with the money are the business people and they're coming in with money so they can pay people to continually put their message across. Yeah. From the, from the user side where we're going, yeah, but this is not good for the general public or the rest of it. Well, who's going to pay for that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the message that EFF. I Yes. Yeah, which we don't have in South Africa. We'll, maybe that's something yeah. that we should. And, and that's exactly, we, we've got, um, like, uh, in South Africa, we've got guys like the African Commons pushing rights, but for, like, disabled people. Uh, not not uh, necessarily users in general, but users in general do benefit from mm. from mm. their, I want to call, I guess we can call it lobbying, though it's not, I guess it's not technically lobbying. But, um, you know, for instance, the copyright law in South Africa, which prevents format shifting. Yes. Uh, and geeks will know what, what that means. That's that's changing CDs to MP3s. And that's illegal. Versa. Yeah. It's actually unlawful in South yeah. Africa. I don't think it's criminal, but it's definitely no. It's not criminal, but it's definitely civil. Yeah, it's definitely the, 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 there yeah. can be some yeah civil civil suit yes. civil suit yeah uh, technically um, yeah but but uh, a, a lawyer also explained to me that listen there's there's a there's a difference between a judiciable I think he called it um, uh, statute and a notional uh, you know thing yeah so this is a notional okay. thing just nobody will enforce it yeah basically okay but uh, like just just so that's out there but um, but the, the African Commons guys are saying, listen, we really need to be able to format shift for the deaf and the blind um, so that they can consume the same content that the able-bodied can, for yeah. instance. And so, but we do need somebody, I think maybe with even a wider scope than that, like the EFF, um, or like even Grok Law. I don't know if you guys remember yes. those dudes. Yeah, yes, of course. That, that's something we didn't put in the show notes, which I just remembered. Grok Law announced that they're shutting its doors. <laughs> well, at the end of the month, you I but, think. But, or at, there's a reason, a very good reason for that, yes. is that they're open to defend against SCO. SCO, SCO yes. And SCO is no longer. It's yes. done. So, so the end of the an era. Purposeful being created is no more. Yes. And and that's cool. And, uh, but I mean, to, to bring um, Grok Law as an example of something which is formed out of a community to represent the interests of that community. And so yeah. um, if it comes down to it, we might need to do that in South Africa. Yeah. Mm. At least, at least at the moment, there are bigger problems. Yes, at least. So, yeah. Sorry, talking about this, there's something we forgot to mention in the due dates is the Google Meetup, oh, 4th yeah. of May. No, the what Google Meetup? G uh, or uh, like that. It's the G Google Gauteng User Group. Oh, okay. Uh, is it a, just, a group, uh, just a user group? It's user well, they're, they're meeting to talk about Android, oh, okay, um, cool. Android development, and they're gonna, I think they're going to have the... the I, I look, I looked at it very briefly, so I can't really remember. Um, but they're going to have a couple 
top developers from Google side there as well. Apparently, they're going to have giveaways and stuff. Yeah, G tag. I typing over there. Do you have it? So, um, it's G tag <laughs> sites.google.com. We should also see Hawkeys is in the IRC. Forward slash site, forward slash Android G tag events, forward slash home. You can rewind and listen to that again if you couldn't, didn't catch it the first time. Um, yeah, GTUG stands for Google Technology User Groups in Cape Town and Joburg. Um, okay, and cool. uh, or, or just subscribe to at hawkies.za. Yeah. Oh, is uh, he involved with it? Well, no, 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 he, he tweeted, tweeted it. it so oh, okay. That's how I find about it. So add him as your Twitter stream, and um, I'm sure we'll get him to tweet again. Cool. Hawkies, if you're listening, are you an IRC, bro? Uh, yeah, tell us IRC. how you got this info. I'm interested. Cool. He'll yep. get it. He's oh, getting the link. Well, while we're awesome. waiting for him, um, the next thing is, Stu, you do quite a lot of open hardware as well. Yeah, right? yeah. So anyway... Um, there's now finally a logo. Cool. So the open hardware guys have been we they've been trying to uh, formalize a license for a while now, um, since almost the beginning of the year. So this is going to be something similar to the Linux uh, new GPL. Yeah, GPL. Um, that but it's designed for hardware, but it's yeah. not just electronics. It can be any type of hardware. So if you are I don't know designing catapult catapults. You can now brand this. There's a logo, um, open hardware, and that it says there's gives your you it gives people rights about the hardware. So there's you know you've got the right to to get the schematics or the design plans and things mm. like that. Cool. <laughs> Question about this: Do you guys remember the Crunch tab, uh, the Tech Crunch? The TechCrunch internet device. I can't remember what they called what? it. The Crunch tablet or something like that. No. It was an open hardware project yeah. that TechCrunch... You guys know TechCrunch? Yes, Crunch? yes. Yeah. 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 Um, that TechCrunch started up in 2007 or eight or something. Uh, I can't remember how far back it goes, but it's, it's a couple of years. And um, I don't remember the details now because I came unprepared for this. Um, <laughs> but, but basically, they put it to the community. So we design... This guy from TechCrunch said he wants... This is now, I think... Before the launch of the iPad, he wants this. a simple device, internet browsing only. That's all it must do. It must la- it's a it's Linux basic Linux kernel that launches a browser, Firefox. Yeah, and that's all he wants. He doesn't want any fanning about. That's, that's he wants to be able do. to sit on the can and browse the internet. Net. Yeah, so that was the spec. Okay. And so the community got together and they they designed the whole thing from the ground up. They contracted an Indian hardware manufacturer um, who is now releasing a tablet with a different name. Um, uh, this this was this is fairly old news, so I don't want to yeah. spend too much time. If you guys <laughs> can just <laughs> Google it up, the, the Crunch tablet, or cool, whatever we'll the case might be. Um, but um, uh, what I'm curious about is, will this open hardware thing protect something like that? Because what happened at the end was this Indian guys, um, this Indian I guy, I vaguely remember it, stole the design. See, well, sort of. His his communication with TechCrunch was his shareholders <laughs> yeah. are putting pressure on him to cut them out. Effectively. Well, okay, this will give you the same similar rights to what you get in the GPL. So it doesn't so mean share that, and share alike. Exactly. But it's still commercial. So if that Indian company wanted to make a commercial product out of it, there's nothing stopping them doing it. Right? I would imagine any adva- uh, advancements they make to it? Any advancements <laughs> they make to it have to be released. Uh, have to, the specs the would have to be released. Specs, specs so would have to be released. That the, might have protected it because they have, I think, made modifications and they're releasing their own tablet now. Yes, but they uh, now closed the design. And yeah, so this would have forced them to open. This the would design. have forced them to keep the design open, which is which is great. I mean, there's nothing wrong with you t- taking a good idea and building a a product out of it and selling yeah. units. There's nothing wrong nothing. with that. It's I mean, like that's, selling that's the whole uh, thing. CDs it's, for. P- yeah, Ubuntu, for Ubuntu. I mean, uh, you know, when they, uh, they make, they don't make money off that. They make money on the services. Yeah. So what you could do is you you package a good product, you got good sales service, and you make your money that way. Mm. Cool. Um, so there's there's definitely guys that are you know is something like that. You're not gonna uh, like a tablet. I mean, a community designed tablet. I mean, your average you know hobbyist is not, not gonna, gonna have it. the equipment to solder BGAs and things like that. So you know there is a there's always a market for things like that. Or the, the machine tools to machine a engine block because mm-hmm. now you're building an open source V6 yeah. or something. But it's it's the, the the licenses are there to help to protect to keep it open so no one can close cool. it. Cool. By the way Hawkey's got back to us. He learned about uh, it from the uh, Android Z A on Twitter. 
Oh, cool. So follow at Android ZA yeah. if you want to know. Well. And Hawkies. And yeah. Hawkies, yeah. Um, cool. So just, just to uh, finish off um, on my totally unprepared uh, TechCrunch <laughs> talk there, the, the person who, well, the person who TechCrunch or Crunch Gear uh, said screwed them over, his name was uh, Chandra Sekar Rathakrishnan, or just Chandra Rathakrishnan. He Say was, that fast five times. Uh, yeah. He was the CEO <laughs> of... Uh, Fusion Garage. Um, I think it was Fusion Garage at the time as well. And uh, Fusion Garage is now releasing a tablet called the Juju. Uh, oh, J double O J double O. Yes. Now I remember this. Don't buy it. <laughs> oh, apparently, it, it wasn't that good, so don't buy it anyway. Yeah, mm, just don't do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, there's been a couple of actually. There's like a. I'm trying to. I can't remember the name of the thing now. Um, speaking about that, there's a, a open source, you know, g- uh, gaming tablet. Or gaming thing, you know. Oh, yeah, the mm. Open Pandora. Open Pandora. I ordered Thank me you. one, and I'm hoping it'll get to me soon. Yeah. And that's also community developed and everything. Completely cool, open source cool. design. Runs Linux, runs MAME, so you can play all your classics on there. Very cool. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. exactly. It's, it's a it's a flavor of Linux. Yeah, and then they slap lay, yeah. MAME on there. And, it's, it's, and it's, I mean, the cool thing is it's completely open. So it's like going back to the old, it's going, going back to like the 70s style where you could um, hack it and go nuts. Change with it. it. I mean, and you've got the specs it. of you've how got it works. the specifications. Works. There's no hidden protocols. There's no funny little pins that you don't know what they do. It's all there. It's all open. If you're gonna, If you want to spend the time to learn about it, Hey, cool. The you know you can do what you want with it, and the cool thing is, is there's nothing stopping you taking the design, improving it, and adding mods for it. I mean, it's it's good for the mm. good for the community, mm. man. And here we see, uh, uh, Elsa's has put it up on screen for us. Uh, the Open Pandora running Quake Three, all kinds of neat things. Yeah, you can, really cool. you can slap a DOS box on there, play some Space Quest, exactly. which was a question at the, <laughs> yeah, at the pub Roger World cool. last time. <laughs> what, what well, is this old Space Quest style of games? Dude, I can Day of the Tentacles. You know. You know, you know that little um, HP that I bought? Yeah. I can play Space Quest on it and the first police quest. Very cool. Very <laughs> cool. But anyway, okay. Uh, so All we're right. going to move along there to something. D- who found this, by the way? Did you find it? Okay. Yes. So you're going to. I'll talk Tim about will it. tell us about it. So, Jan, does your wife like the smell of bacon? <laughs> she enjoys the smell of bacon. <laughs> so do you think, uh, you know, bacon cologne would work? <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how to get the vegetarians to avoid you and, and only attract meat lovers. Dude, it'll piss Peter off. <laughs> <laughs> only if they use real bacon. Yeah. What? what? <laughs> bacon. Bacon, cologne. cologne. So, so, you know, after you, you've shaved whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. $36 <laughs> a bottle. <laughs> Does it say CK on one of those bottles? What? $36. It doesn't sound reasonable for cologne. Do you know how much cologne is? Yeah, look, I'm married. <laughs> he doesn't look, need to I, I, I don't buy a cologne. It's like a little tube this big, man. What? Yeah, no, it's crazy, no. no. C- cologne. It's as big as a mascara bottle. Okay, how much does your wife's perfume cost? <laughs> I got it at duty free. <laughs> um, I, I, and and Mishpri was Dude, within this price range. you'd hate to know how expensive perfume is. I can't say it. I know it. how expensive Dude, perfume is. Dude, it is absolutely ridiculous. Tens of pounds is what I paid. We'll leave the unmarried (laughs) guys to just (laughs) sort that one out and we'll move along. All right. (laughs) Anyway, bacon cologne. Plus. Plus. I just (laughs) want to try it. (laughs) Don't don't drink it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um, Um, uh, Also another thing. uh, Okay. Well, we're talking about, you know, we get all these caps and they're telling us in this country how the rest of the the world world is normally capped. And they're using, look at America, how it's now saying to go capped. So, yeah, it justifies why we're getting capped. Well, the That's guys internet that, caps, by the internet way. Internet caps in America. Look, admittedly, they're getting 250 gigs to 300 gigs caps. Yeah. But some guys went and did some studies, and they say, well, the guys in America also say, well, the norm for the rest of the world is to be capped. Some guy says, okay, well, let's do this study. Let's actually do it. No. It's actually a very small percentage of countries that actually cap. And it's probably going to be in the developing world rather yeah. than the developed Developed world. world. Yeah. Um, but I know that the argument they put forward why they're actually wanting to start implementing these caps now in America is they're scared of losing the revenue streams of video because they can see like our shows that people are now seeing to produce podcasts video is eventually going to come through the internet yeah. Yeah. and best On way demand, to stop yeah. it cap them cap it yeah it's either that or throttle it, yeah, which is why they, they, they're pushing so hard for net neutrality right. in the States, which we should leave for another show because that's yeah. an in-depth discussion. But it's, uh, that's why they're pushing for that stuff. Yeah, so, um, yeah I haven't, I, I, I've got to admit, I didn't read the whole study, um, so I can't poke holes in it. But, yeah, it's, it seems like they did a, 
you know, it's the uh, organize, look, organization for economic cooperation and development. The other thing, though, is in, in America, they're getting, they're hitting fifty. You can get a fifty meg line, right? Yeah. Do you but, know how quickly you will go hit? 250 oh, gigs on a 50 meg line. Especially if you're watching like HD content. Yes. And I mean, just think how many, uh, YouTube, so, you know, 1080 videos are gigs and gigs and gigs. Um, and there you, are some 4K videos on YouTube as well. There are yeah. some 4Ks, well, yeah. I, I, I was looking just my example. I've got a cell C uh, 5 gig speed stick. Works well. Lovely. Unfortunately, it's too fast because I've hit my cap already. <laughs> yeah. And that's not doing anything illegitimate. I'm watching YouTube videos, downloading uh, updates. But because it's so quick, you, you don't realize how quickly you're using it. So I would imagine if there was a 50 uh, meg line, I would be, we'd be done in like a day. Yeah. I mean, even with the, with the um, speed stick from Cell C. Yeah. I mean, come on, what, you get five gigs a month out no, of it? that's what he's talking yeah, about. Oh, is that what about. he's talking yes, about? Oh, yeah. sorry. You mean yeah. you're down in seconds. Yeah, oh. smokes it. Yeah. But anyway, um, I see we're not on the list of uncapped countries. <laughs> no, no, we're not. There's like we, we Albania have and Austria and Algeria. Uh, sorry, Australia, Belgium, Chile. There's all the, they yeah. provide uncapped. We, we, have, we have such a small handful of ISPs actually providing uncapped services. And those that do, there's even a smaller handful that can that provide a affordable uncapped no. services a lot of them are like three four grand for uncapped unshaped or uh, uncapped unmetered estonia okay freaking estonia 100 megasecond uncapped unlimited lovely and that would be way that's because like four uh, people estonia the is uh what's it uh, eastern europe middle of nowhere oh <laughs> Uh, they looked quickly, you know, oh, you always see articles on my broadband and the forums, you know, Telcom says they're competitive and someone go look, just UK, well, no. UK, right? 20, 20. Did you see the last one for Africa? No. We 88. 88 in Africa. Yes. Out of yeah. how many is that? that I mean, that's like it's 100 and something countries in Africa. Yeah, we're right, we're near, right the near the bottom for cost per, per meg. Yeah. Jeepers. And and once again, uh, without getting too in-depth on, on the Centec press that we, we, we had today, they put up some stats showing that South Africa's broadband uh, fixed line, broadband penetration in the country is 1%. Yeah. Who no. That's so bad. Anyway, all right. Anyway, we can moving go along. Sorry, uh, since we're talking about speed sticks. Yes, and no, no. Vodacom, I've got a special. And by the way, I must say, starting the 1st of May. Because I've seen some That was ridiculous. Yeah, they going, make all these press and everything from the 1st of May. No, I don't mind that they're sorry, the 1st of May. But so many people go, but I've been to the website and I can't get it. And I'm going, did you read the advert? It says <laughs> starting the 1st first, first of May. Okay, fine. Look, it's a bit of a pain that they've started advertising it now. Really, you can't go buy it. Yeah. Um, but in this, they say they're now the lowest cost. The lowest cost? Cost uh, for compared to meg. Uh, for two, two, gig. Meg. And it's Sorry, two gig, gig. It's four gig. For, for two, two gigs. Because they give you two gigs from 12 to... From they, midnight till four. They four. eventually give you, well, yeah, a nerfed Download Plus. I don't know if you guys have ever used Download Plus on Web yes, Africa. Yeah. That's also like midnight to six. So now, they give you a nerfed Download Plus. I, I know just from personal use, you, you're never going to use that. Unless you schedule a torrent on a four gig account. Well, what's going to happen is you're going to finish your first two gigs in half the month and then you're going to leave your Windows updates that, that might use some of the two when gigs. You, when night. you really need to get that um, episode of Jersey Shore. <laughs> 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 so, so, sounds like you've had this experience too. <laughs> what, 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 what we have done uh, on my broadband obviously is do a comparison on mm. entry level packages and mm. I wouldn't call this anything else yeah. it's an entry level package and it is the cheapest entry level package for any geek out there it's pretty well, worthless we're going to burn through 4 yes. gigs in just if I may I think you, you, you somebody touched on the thing about Windows updates Yeah. default Windows when you set the automatic updates it goes for 3am yes so maybe that's exactly because I mean the okay, service pack right. one for for Windows yes. Seven it came so, out. So okay, it's a year contract. So in, in one year with service pack one, you will download what's it six hundred megs uh, in the one month. Yeah. So okay. and it's normally roughly a hundred megs a month. So after that, using a hundred megs of the two gigs. Now look, if you're a geek, you can schedule your stuff. Yeah, you yeah, write yeah. The scripts, but if you're my mother, you never go. She's gonna turn her PC off. Yeah. They're never going to have it on at night. And that's not so they, they're selling it as it's cheaper. If, if you take that two gigs off and you look at the monthly fee and you take the cell C one and you divide that, what's it's two grand or 1,500 1, divided by 12, it actually works out slightly cheaper. So they're actually doing a bit of a marketing twist to try and get underneath cell C. Mm. Now, look, Vodacom has got better reception, uh, might have better speed, but they've got better coverage. Sell it on that. 
you know, sell that you're a better service. Don't. But it's difficult, though. That's the problem. So um, I agree with you completely. Do and Web Africa have tried this as well to sort of go. Yes, we're capped. Yes, we're slightly more expensive than AfriHost. But to prove that you actually have a better network to the extent that the ASA needs, because the second you do that, your competitors are going to be at the ASA going. He can't say he has a better network than me. Where's his proof? Mm. And then the ASA has to go, now you've got to submit proof that 90% of your subscribers experience a better, uh, yes. a better yes. network, yeah. better service than they would if they were on your competitor's network. Okay. I mean, it makes it hard, but yeah, then to just advertise this marketing it, yeah. twist spin thing to sell it. Just why would they like two weeks before like start marketing this thing? I just don't understand why. You're not going to, I mean, this is supposed to be for consumer, not. Not ordering a Porsche that's due for release in six months' time. Oh, I don't know. Look, yeah, I know with people with, want it. You, 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 you advertise and it's an impulse buy. Like, oh, that's cool. Uh, I can't get it. I, I don't yeah, want you'll to You'll forget about it in two Well, weeks. look, yeah. with Cell C, they were rolling out because they were rolling out their network. So they, they did a rollout. They did a similar mm. thing. We're going to have this. Are uh, we starting in was East London or PE that they started in? And they rolled out to the rest of the country. So I know I was sitting there going, I want this. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Yeah, but. With Vodacom, I don't really see why. As a point of interest, where did you guys see the ad? Sorry, the first time I read, I, I knew about uh, this, obviously, was from when we ran the right, yeah. Was it an article they ran, or was it a, an actual advert on his website? Uh, it it's was a, an article that he wrote an about advert. Advert. So, um, an article that he ad. stole from us. Um, but, uh, sorry, is that live? Did I just say that? Um, <laughs> 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 oh, well. Um, but, um, yeah, he's welcome to take me on about it. But the the the... Uh, so yeah, so I think what may have happened is <laughs> we found out about it, and uh, look, I, I don't want to say it, but I, th I I suspect what happened was we found out about it and sort of forced Vodacom's hand. I don't know. Like, okay, I, I know when I did see you did have a, the, the advert app. Oh, so the advert was there. Okay, yeah. then it, that might not be that. That's yeah. on the website. It was just pulled up here. Yeah. Oh, no. the, the giant ad at the yes, top. Yes, that's. On you the sure website. that's not a banner? That's not a banner just for the most recent article. No, 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 no. This is on Vodacom.co.za. This oh, is okay. Vodacom's the top of their website. Oh my giddy aunt! <laughs> All right, find out All more. Right. You want to find out more from uh, Vodacom to uh, IRS? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, we'll do another. Quick. We'll do another hardware topic then. Seeing cool. that it's going to be a hardware okay. show. Well, if you you very into your sort of yes, and yeah. measuring things. It's always good fun. So here's a here's a if you if you kind of if you kind of new and you you're getting into um, maybe a bit of electronics and, and you, you have an iPad you have an iPad, uh, I think it works with an iPhone as well. Um, yes. Here's a, a little dongle that you can plug in, and it gives you a single channel oscilloscope, single channel and four logic channels. Um, so you get a little logic analyzer and a and a and a and a um, DSO. So yeah. So for engineering students who don't mm. want to sit in the lab, yeah, uh, depending what you're doing, hey, uh, Look, it's, it's very very high. limited. It's hey? gonna be low speed. So um, I think it's it's five megahertz on the well, analog right. channel, and it's I don't know bad, how many uh, 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 megahertz. Not not no five megahertz. Yeah, okay. It's pretty slow. Yeah, it's pretty slow. Sorry. <laughs> so if you actually you know you took a look at your your Ninquist algorithm, you're looking at. What a third of that is actually usable, a fifth yes. of it is usable bandwidth. So you're looking maybe one megahertz of usable bandwidth on but it. But look, if you're a hobbyist and you're playing and you're wanting to learn how the stuff works, no, it's I cool. mean, I guess it's, it's, it's got its um, uses. It's going to be a hell of a lot cheaper than a. Um, wait, wait, we have a question. An actual scope. Do I, am I looking at something that actually plugs into the iPad yes. Yes. socket yes. that was not made by Apple? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that happens. You can a lot. buy that, you can get them now. But, but you pay licensing you, fees for that socket, Yes, you I have suppose. to pay licensing fees for the um, decoder chip and stuff like that, or the unlocking chip and things like that. So when will they release something for Android? Uh, you could build yourself one with our previous yes. story. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but no, right. up to now, there's nothing been released for, but you for do, Android. You can now buy the, the, bi the bits to actually make that, that oscilloscope piece. Um, you get kits now that you can buy. Oh, yes, yeah. Um, and then you just buy that other piece that speaks through the... Uh, USB port, Make off it. you go. Yeah, yeah it, it, it it can they can get pretty expensive too for those USB scopes as well. I mean, there's Pico scope that makes very. J just very make good sure ones. you have one that has uh, separation. Yeah, optic optic separation yeah. between your USB and what you're measuring because <laughs> oh, bad you will things blow can your stuff up. Okay, sorry guys, I don't know if you've caught on, but I wouldn't go and buy, 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 build something like this as a hobby, but it, it does show where. Peripherals could now actually become not a toy, but actually a practical. Yeah, but I'm waiting so the next until they turn this into a Wi-Fi dongle. Or, or why? Or why have this plugged in? 
So Thunderbolt, you can might be able to run at high megahertz. Yeah, uh, well, you can't put. You probably don't want to. You probably don't want to run a radio in there if you've got quite sensitive. Um, well, it's also power amps and things. Yeah. And you'd need a battery then. I'm just thinking it would be nice, you know, then you can take whatever device you want. You can use your web browser. Yes, no, no, fair enough. But it's it's cool. And if you really, if you're getting into it, if you're a student, it might work. Depending what you're doing, you're not going to do very high frequency stuff with it. But it's 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 interesting. It's cheap, put yeah. it that way. It's, it, I'm try, I'll get you the price right now. Sorry, I'll close the page with the price. So um, and I'll get you the spec on it. Oh, flip, man, come on. Cool. Anyway, it's it's yeah, oh, and it it gives you a massive screen, which is pretty useful. Um, okay, here we go. Sorry, it's five megahertz on the analog bandwidth, and your sample rate on your digital stuff is twelve mega samples a second. So yeah, and it works on your iPod Touch iPhone 4, the 3GS, the 3G, and the iPad as well. Cool. And we've got a price here. It's $297 for the dongle. And that gets you that, the, the a probe and a little bit of accessories. Cool. So it's not cheap, eh? No. It's no, going to no. set you back two and a half grand. So maybe rather buy a secondhand oscilloscope. Get yourself a secondhand analog tektronics or something if you can find them for that price mm. you're, or you pay a bit more and you you're, have not get the, you're not going to get the digital analyzer either then yeah, with it true. it'll be purely analog so cool but Look you will that. get dual traces then cool <laughs> sorry just speaking about the iPad I meant to speak about something last week I ordered a case yeah, sh- nice shiny case. Nice shiny for everybody, wa- for everybody yes, uh, yes. listening uh. to the audio, it's silver. It's silver. It's aluminium. It's machined aluminium yeah, as well. Very nice. What uh, air- airplane grade machined aluminium? Aircraft grade. Air- aircraft grade. So it will <laughs> What fly. it actually is, it's also got a keyboard inside. Okay, go hold it still. Cool. Okay, other way, other way. There you go. Okay, turn it, turn it, turn it. Ninety degrees, ninety degrees. Cool. No, other way. Turn it so the keyboard's upright. That's what I mean. There we go. Oh, you down. would like a preview. Okay. There we go. Cool. There All we right. go. <laughs> and then the other thing is it's got a little stand so you can... Uh, so you, you literally turn your iPad into a little laptop. Yeah. But it's a, it's slightly more uh, uh, compact than the It's very compact. Laptop. It Actually, it, it covers the screen so you can use it purely as your case. So the whole thing actually sli- slides in very nicely. But unfortunately, it doesn't fit the iPad 2. No. Yeah, the no, iPad 2 is a little bit thin for but it. But I'm sure okay, they'll, wait, they'll wait, build wait, another wait, wait. one. Yeah. Um, is it a Bluetooth keyboard? Bluetooth keyboard. Okay, so it's, it's, it's then separate batteries for the keyboard. Yes, uh, it's uh, internal batteries, charges via micro USB. Okay, so um, a keyboard batteries last forever, so that's fine. Yeah, I know. It, it, and I play around with it. It works beautifully. So works they've got really a well. lithium, is it a lithium battery they've got inside that keyboard? Yep. Yeah. Mm, that's mm, rechargeable batteries. Long. Yeah, it's, it's great. Um, and I think it cost me 700 Rand with delivery. Well, that's Jeepers. not bad. From, so, from overseas? Yeah. Yes. Second time so, round, though, eh? They resent it. Yes, but that's what I'm saying. So it, it got lost somewhere got lost along the, first the line. Time, and they resent it. Got lost. Yes. Yes, lost. But I mean, um, 700 Rand is what you would pay for a standalone cover sometimes. It and costs it, me more. If you go look for covers, it will cost you more in this country for just for the cover without the keyboard. Still won't make me buy an iPad, but keep going. True, yeah, um, <laughs> look, the nicest thing that where I've actually found is quite often now I've got a, something to slot the iPad into to read with. Yeah. And it's just lovely because now you don't have so to. So you've got a 700 Rand. <laughs> 700 Rand stand. stand. Yes. <laughs> Well, you laugh. You know, with Barry's iPad 2, with yeah. the, that, that, the, that rolling cover, yes. he paid more than that for the cover. I think he was true. 800 Yeah, but he did buy it in Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah no, so it's true, but still, I mean, you're not going to find it in South Africa for less than that. Yeah. There's no and, way. And we were talking, and it was being mentioned, uh, Aki actually said it last night at the, the Tech Central I'm going to call that BS on that story. Oh, no, so you're going to call sure, it BS, sure. so we know how much uh, Barry paid for it in Hong Exactly, Kong. in Hong Kong. It would have been just cheaper to fly to Hong Kong. It, yeah. it, it yeah. was more expensive than if you had to buy it in America. Because the plane tickets from, from South Africa to Hong Kong and from South Africa to the States are about the same price. Yeah, but you get a 10-year visa to go to the States. <laughs> if you, you want to go to Hong Kong, you get to have to get a new one. Yeah, but Hong Kong's easy to get to. Yeah, I guess. It's really not an issue. Cool. And if anyway. you have a British passport, it's even easier. <laughs> <laughs> L- last topic. Last right? topic, last topic. Okay, this is pretty cool. So um, it's called Stripe Spotter, and it's a open source project that is used for Turning zebras into barcodes. <laughs> Literally. Yes. Uh, so what it's designed for is for studying herds of striped or spotted animals. Okay. So they add a photo. So they take photos of the herds. It helps you spot animals. Helps you spot animals. 
well, not just spot animals, <laughs> put, a U, put an ID on the animal. It helps you spot spotted animals. Spot spotted animals, yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, I want to know what happens if you've got more than one zebra in the... No, that's what it's designed it's because every form. single zebra's stripes are no, slightly you, different. Let's say you've got you've got two zebras mm-hmm. standing sort of head. Don't to head. test it now to the ultimate. No, I'm pretty sure they. I'm pretty sure yeah, they thought sure of that. They thought of that, yeah. Um, you'd either take just a whole bunch of photos, so all it'll say is it can't ID those two zebras, but it'll ID everyone else in the herd, mm. and you just take a whole sequence of photos or feed it from video or something, and as soon as the two zebra move apart or you drive it at a slightly different angle, yeah. oh, you'll ID the zebra. Actually being able to, to, to do it via video rather than taking a yeah. snap. So that, you know, as you're driving. And essentially what this does is it takes the uh, black and white stripes, let's say, in a zebra, and it turns them into a uniquely identifiable number or code yeah. and it's definitely going to be interesting to find out if zebra if zebra stripes are in fact unique yes yes so well, they obviously that, are unique enough that this works yeah but i mean but like, remember now the study will will sort of prove that theory I but think. also what they've been this is not just for zebras you know that's one of the ways they're tracking penguins okay um is the the shape of the um the shape plumage. of the plumage they've got little spots on their chests and that's unique Oh, okay, and cool. they, keep the, they keep that right throughout their life. Because they, they did a study... Oh, yeah. How are you going to know who Daddy Penguin is? If? Exactly. Yeah. So they did a study. Um, f- what they normally do is they ban their flippers. And they did a study to show how, if, how, you know, how much of an impact in their life does banding have. And it actually shows that it has a massive impact in the penguin mortality rate versus banded and unbanded penguins. Sure, okay. Uh, like per- large percentages. I th- think I'm well, going to lie, but it was about 15% you know, or something. Don't need to tag the animal Exactly. Anymore. The biggest issue with the penguins was is it affects their aerodynamics. Yes, oh, and so they can't down. swim. Mm. So what they're finding is the penguins are not swimming slower. They just expending more energy to keep up pace. Mm. And, yeah, I mean, as physics teaches us, uh, the act of observation itself changes the measurement. Yeah. So, so at least with this, is you could set up almost remote stations and, what this, so and do it online. Also, is you've got all this historic data of animal exactly. captures. Yeah. And you can now pass this through. And, and you must really, well, they say you're fine. Across different wildlife videos, you're going to be able to track yeah, exactly. this one through. Leopold the Leopard, yeah. Very cool. So anyway, it's cool, and it's a Google Code project. You can go download it and write an Android app for it and Sorry, track I, a zebra I in the Google Sorry, I just see Elsa was pulling up uh, Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> Stabbing teddy bears, what? Not yet. It was uh, not here. Okay, oh, okay. All, right. all right, all right. Cool. But anyway, it's a cool project. Go check uh, it out. Check it out. It's quite fun, and it's, it's written in C++, so it will be quite easy to port to an a, a, a iPhone app. And to a um, to run into the native to into Google goggles, very likely. Uh, why not? I mean, you just get the NDK for your Android. Come on, guys. There we go. There's a cool project. The 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 Easter holidays are coming up, man. You got like two Come on, weeks. All, all that free time. You got hey. all, all that free time. Get I'm stuck in a get stuck By the way, project. saying that we don't have a show next week. I was going to say that. Yes. Yes. Uh, this is going to be the last show until next month. And look, seeing it, everybody's looking at me. Let's talk Afrikaans is also, also just keeping real. the show. So the, the let's is talk the le- sports on Tuesday, though. Is, are they still going ahead? Yes, because they missed this week. Okay. So I think for Let's Talk Geek, the next show is going to probably be May the 4th. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then May the 12th, uh, we've got, uh, I'm going to just confirm the guests before I mention them, but we've got some nice guests coming through comedians that are also going to talk about social networking and how they're Facebook and how they're using it basically to sell their shows and stuff. Cool. All right. I think that that wraps it up unless else has got something to show us. Oh, well, I don't know. You had it in the show notes. What is this photo about? What? what sh- we didn't have it in the show notes. Oh, is it in the uh, RC it links? Just, yeah. These are in the RC links. It's just as, as we go through finding our topics, we find all these really cool links. So I just like throwing them into the RC to the guys so I can share the love. That is, is pretty Darth funny. Is Darth Vader though. grilling Care Bears? No, Wookiees, dude. No, Wookiees, man. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> on that note. <laughs> and on, on that, that fail. <laughs> See, this is why I win. win, win. <laughs> All right. Because I know Jack Diddley about Star Wars. <laughs> cool. All right. Okay, what's that? That's the Death Star. Okay. okay cool. You, we, but it's we'll, unbolted, we'll, so we'll tr- it's, it's, not a, it's not really the Death Star. We'll tr- it's a Death Star in progress. We'll train you. Don't worry. We'll train <laughs> you. Okay. I think that wraps it up for yeah, tonight. All eh? right. Okay. So thank you, thank you, Johan Als for doing the mixing for us. Well, let's see how the Th- feedback is on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was fun. And uh, Jan, thank you again. Thanks and for some having me. Cool and stuff. Thank you, Stuart. And we will speak to you guys on the fourth of May. May. Cool. Cheers. Enjoy your holiday. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers, cool. everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.